हेलो एवरी वन हाउ यू वेलकम टू फिक ज्ञान विच इज फिजिक्स ज्ञान नो बिफोर आई स्टार्ट आई वॉन्ट यू टू टेक अ लुक एट दिस एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू वॉच दिस वीडियो इन हिंदी क्लिक ऑन दिस लिंक गिवेन अब यू नो दैट आई बटन या यू माइट हैव सीन दीज काइंड ऑफ टॉयज और शो पीस समवेयर वेन यू लुक एट दम एट फर्स्ट इट फील वेरी स्ट्रेंज बिकॉज यू आर जस्ट सो नाइसली बैलेंस्ड and you think that these are very complex but what if i told you that you can make similar thing at home here look at this can you see how beautifully it is balanced on just one finger and it is not very complex what i have used is just two forks and a needle you can actually use a toothpick but how i know you must be curious to understand the physics behind it and the physics lies in the concept of center of mass now what is center of mass and how does it help us let us take a look at this so until now whenever you were writing the formula of force you were saying f equals to ma and momentum was p equals to mv but what here is a and v it's very easy i know you'll say a is acceleration of the body and v is velocity of the body but what is body like take a look at this if you see this car moved a displacement of let's say d and it took t time to do it so the velocity would be d by t and it doesn't really matter which point you take because if you take this point or let's say this point they all have traveled the same amount of displacement so the velocity will always be same all right look at this i'll throw the phone with the flashlight on and i'll try to keep it vertical so this was the case if you look at this phone and let's say this point is the flashlight so this phone took a trajectory of a parabola because all the projectiles are a parabola right so this flashlight also took a trajectory of a parabola now it doesn't matter which point i choose on this phone because all these points will again take the same trajectory of a parabola right okay now take a look at this I took a long exposure shot and this is the trajectory that I found. It's a parabola. Now, take a look at this. What do you think the trajectory would be if I throw it like this? Now, understand this with this animation. Look at this. If you take notice of this point, that is the flashlight again, it took a trajectory of something like this. Right? Okay. Now, do you want to see what I found with the long exposure shot? Look at this. Well, it shows an almost similar looking pattern. So, if you were to find the range or let's say height of this projectile, which velocity will you take? Because you have seen that velocity of all the points is different. They are taking different trajectories. But one point is actually special. here look at this black color point this black point let's say was here it took an almost parabolic trajectory not almost it actually took a parabolic trajectory and you know which is this point this point is actually the center of mass of this body yes center of mass is that special point of which velocity you will be taking and keeping in the formulas of projectiles so what is center of mass it is actually the point where all the mass of the body can be assumed to be concentrated now mind the word assumed the mass is not actually concentrated it is distributed but you can assume that body to be a point object 
and that point is center of mass where all the mass of the body is concentrated the second point to note about center of mass is if you apply a net force on this point it will result in a translational motion now translational motion i'm talking about linear as well as any curve can be a translational motion but it can never be uh let's say rotational plus translational motion so yes these are the specialities of center of mass look at this video over here you'll understand better that how applying a force on the center of mass makes it go into a translational motion i have marked the center of mass of this object with black in the middle you can see if i apply a force anywhere else it starts to rotate as well as do some translational motion but if i apply a force in a line of center of mass it moves in a straight line yes this is the speciality of center of mass so now that we have understood that whenever we were using formulas of force equals to mass into acceleration or p equals to mass into velocity a and v were actually the accelerations and velocity of center of mass let us learn how to find a center of mass of a system of point objects for example let's say this is one object of mass m1 and this is another object of mass m2 okay now let me change the color of my pen let's say this is my reference okay the position vector of mass m1 is r1 the position vector of mass m2 is r2 so the center of mass will be m1 into r1 plus m2 into r2 upon m1 plus m2 now this r1 r2 if there were more it would just go on right and in the denominator masses is also keep adding okay now you can notice that this is like a weighted average i'll i'll explain you what this term means for example i had a mass m1 here and at d distance i had some other mass m2 okay and let's say i'll take my reference over here so what will be the center of mass center of mass would be m1 into 0 plus m2 this will be d comma 0 m2 into d upon m1 plus m2 so it will come out to be m2 d upon m1 plus m2 yes this is the center of mass and this is the x axis of center of mass can you predict what will be the y axis see this is symmetric on y axis so there is nothing so it is only aligned on x axis therefore the center of mass will be m2 d upon m1 plus m2 now if m1 and m2 were equal this would become then d by 2 right it will come somewhere in the middle but let's say m2 was twice of m1 just a second so let's say m2 is twice of m1 then the center of mass will come out to be 2 m1 look here 2 m1 d upon m1 plus twice of m1 this is 2 m1 d upon 3 m1 2 by 3 d right which means this has shifted a little bit here so you can just have an intuition that wherever the heavier part is center of mass will be shifting a little bit to that side yes this is the intuition that you have to build you know you'll just keep practicing problems and you'll understand how this thing works okay now how to find the center of mass of objects which are not 
point objects let's say there is a circle like this okay now there is an easy method just take notice this is a symmetrical figure like if this was your origin this is the radius this is again the radius so in the x-axis it is symmetrical in y-axis also it is symmetrical therefore the center of mass would be 0 comma 0 if you have a square again this is of a side and this is also a side right if you make diagonals and take this as reference so this is the center of mass so casually for the symmetrical figures you can always say that their center is actually the center of mass but what if the body was irregular and is it necessary that the center of mass will always be inside the body okay let me answer the first question first what if the body was irregular mm, for example let's say I take a basic spoon that you have at your house right the easiest method that you can apply practically to find center of mass of these kind of objects is you can just take your hand and try to find a point where all this balances and you have an intuition that where this point might lie so we'll take a hidden trial method and you'll find the center of mass so this is how you can find center of mass of irregular bodies now is it necessary that center of mass will always be inside the body let me answer you by showing you a donut now most of you must have you know seen a donut before yeah what do you think the center of mass will be the center of mass lies in the center and yes this is a most astonishing thing center of mass is actually lying at a point where there is no stuff how is this possible but yes this is take a look at this figure this is more of a l-shaped object so let's say this is of distance a and this is also of distance a so if I break this object into two parts I can say that the center of mass first object would be somewhere in the middle so if let's say this point is 0 comma 0 this is my reference then this distance would be a by 2 and center of mass of this object in the y-axis will again be at the middle and this distance will again be a by 2 right so I have got center of mass of this one and of this one now if I were to find the center of mass of this combined system it will be somewhere on this line the line joining the center of masses of both these objects because right now you have actually assumed these two objects to be a point object and which is lying on their center of masses so therefore the center of mass will come out to be somewhere here and that is if the masses of these two bodies are same it will be in exact middle this is the intuition and this is the logic that you will build up by yourself now take a look at this video that I'm going to show you and you'll understand how you can make this balancing toys at your home you'll need two folks and I have marked their center of masses in black as you can see they are perfectly balanced at this point now connect both of these folks like I'm showing it to you and then use a needle or a toothpick to fix it in the middle and then you're good to go you have your own balancing toy you can go and show it off to your friends enjoy now if you think this video has helped you then like this video share and subscribe to it and press the bell icon and if you can leave comment that what you want me to do in the next video then please feel free to share your views with me thank you